Welcome, low ego action heroes. This is Debbie Levitt from DeltaCX.com. We're a full service CX and UX consultancy. We do projects, training, and consulting. And welcome to episode 22 of the Think Out Loud stream. Um, this is part three of a fake project we've been working on for a few weeks now. If you have not watched episodes 20 and 21, I do recommend those first. But of course, if you're catching us live, you're here now, and that's pretty good. Um, so in the last two episodes, we I gave you some foundational domain knowledge about DVC, which is the Disney Vacation Club. And um, then we worked on a fake research plan. Now, if this is your first time watching Think Out Loud, you might be like, fake research plan? What's going on here? Here's the short version. The Think Out Loud series that we do most Mondays is where I take a fake project, usually something you've suggested. How can you suggest one? Go to deltacx.com slash links. You'll see how there. It's free. Um, and we use that fake project to look at how I would plan generative research. So what would I want to learn before strategizing uh, the product direction, before strategizing the design? Good morning, Whitney. Hello, Manuel. Um, so what would we do? Hey, Nedu. Uh, how would we uh, plan this research if this were a real project? Hey, Sri. And then uh, we don't do the research, of course, because it's a fake project and I don't have the time and money to do a lot of fake research. And then we come back and we pretend that the research has been done. We pretend we've learned some things. Of course, some of them will be assumptions and guesses, but in real life, they would be knowledge and facts and insights. And then we design something uh, based on what we imagine we've learned. And hey, Janice, and a good key here is going to be to make sure to remember you are not the user, that you might have preferences for what we're working on, which today is going to be a vacation booking system. And you might say, well, when I've used vacation booking systems, I didn't like this. So let's fix that here. Remember that you're not the user and that we have to work from our research insights. Only in some not so good situations are UX designers just guessing at, at what we should make without having good uh, research insights. Remember, the user-centered design process looks like this. And if you are just doing design without having done research, you're missing out on a lot. You are, and it could lead to project mistakes, wrong choices. So doing that research first and working from that research is important. Though, of course, for the purposes of this show, our research is fake. We pretend it happened. So I'm not going to go through everything about DVC because uh, you can always go back and watch episodes 20 and 21 in the uh, YouTube Think Out Loud playlist. So please subscribe over on YouTube. We now have over 5,000 subscribers. Thanks to everybody who's been uh, interested in learning more about UX and getting some advice. So we're going to do some design today. And one of the first things that people might notice is that as I do design, I'm not pulling up the current version of the page. Can anybody tell me why I'm not going to look at or work from the current version of the page? I'll, I'll give everybody a few seconds to answer that while I clear out a couple of uh, emails coming in. Who can guess or who knows why I wouldn't work from the existing thing? Now, of course, there's a bit of delay between when I say something. It's about 30 seconds until our YouTubers see it. So um, let's see if anyone knows. Shri says to avoid priming. Okay, yeah, that's, uh, that's part of it. Let's see if anyone else has another answer. Why wouldn't I look at the existing current version? Uh, Marjolaine says, uh, bias and Manuel says bias. Yeah. All of these are really, all of these are really flavors of the same thing, but I'm going to add something else to this, which is very often if we look at an existing, 
um, solution or existing version, we make small changes to it. We don't imagine reinventing it. We don't imagine, now again, if our project allows us to reinvent it, we should. Um, incremental changes are incremental changes. They're not always the right solution. They might be better, but they might not be best. So I'm also going to avoid looking at the current thing so that not only am I not biased to kind of copy some of what's already there, but so that I really reinvent it and I don't just make it a little better. So we're going to be working today on a design for a, in the, I mean, in short, it's a hotel booking system. But if you've watched the previous episodes, you know that it has some weird complexities because it is a timeshare system, um, because it is a points-based timeshare system, not a uh, calendar-based one, um, that uh, it, it assumes people have knowledge that they might not. So in fact, let's take a look at some, uh, some of what our research research goals were, our fake ones, from the previous, um, let me just open up the right screen and then I'll flip over to it. We identified some research goals, so we're just going to pretend that we did our research and we met these goals and we now know these things. So I'll press this button and okay, great. So you're seeing me, the optional tip jar, the chat room, and of course my um, screen. So we wanted to know about the task flow of vacation planning. What do people do in what order? Our target audiences. Do they tend to vacation um, repeatedly, maybe in other places? Um, how do people decide to use their timeshare points? You get a certain number of points each year um, for a certain number of years. Um, how do they decide to use their points and book a vacation in the Disney system versus deciding to go somewhere else? Um, so again, in research, it's great to learn things about tasks and decision making, because ultimately, if you think about it, a hotel booking or vacation searching flow is a series of decisions and, and it, it, it requires knowledge. Um, other decision-making processes, how do they budget for the trip? Who's traveling with them? Do they have a preferred hotel? Who makes a final approval of any of this? Hey, Shalene. Where are each of the collaborators? Do they work with other people? Because that might change what the hotel booking system looks like. Maybe there's some sort of feature that has to do with share this to my sister-in-law or, or two people doing it at the same time in some, in some way. Um, again, those are features and solutions, but now that we're at the design stage, we're going to start to think about solutions. And in my world, the features come from the solution. It's important to create the right solution first and then see what features you end up with. That would be task oriented design versus feature oriented design, which is, ah, we know what features we want to make. Now let's just Let's just make the screens. So I'm trying to teach you the better way to do things. It may or may not match how your current job does it, but show them this video and maybe they'll fall in love with the idea. Um, who are the collaborators? Where are their pain points in vacation planning? What's missing from the experience, which we would never ask directly. We would just try to learn that from observations. Um, what have more savvy or experienced travelers learned that now they use in their process? So great to see how newbies do this, who are probably really confused by most of it, versus the more savvy people who probably have tricks, tools, workarounds, band-aids they put on stuff, knowledge. Um, and what do people do before, during, and after booking, which is again part of the task. So we're going to pretend that we've learned these things. You're going to pretend along with me and we are going to start with our design. Now I am working in Aksher, uh, hashtag not sponsored. Many of you know I'm a huge Aksher fan and that I only work in Aksher. Uh, this is not sponsored. I pay them. They don't pay me. I strongly recommend Aksher and I teach it for free here on the YouTube channel. Just come on over to the Delta CX YouTube channel and look for the playlist that is called uh, something about Aksher, Rapid Prototyping with Aksher, something like that. I've got 13 hours of lessons. You will be a confident intermediate Aksher user if you go through all the lessons and it's free. 
All right, so I wrote a couple of notes to myself here about some things I wanted to remember to think about while designing. I may or may not use all of these, but I that's as far as I've gotten. So for those of you who think I super prep for these shows and I already have a design in mind, I cannot tell you how blank my mind is other than to tell you that just before the show, I uh, took a bad fall outside of my house and uh, jumped into the shower with my clothes on to wash the gravel that was embedded in my knee and I'm now covered in iodine, so I can't, I really can't stress how blank my mind is and how much I'm not thinking about this at all. So if anyone thinks I've super prepared for this, I haven't. And also remember that my process is I don't sketch first. Many of you do, and I support you. I don't want you to think that you shouldn't sketch first because Debbie doesn't sketch first. I don't sketch first because I'm not a natural visual artist, and my, my, um, natural thing isn't like go pick up a pen or pencil or marker it's get your button to action um Janice says are you okay I think I'm okay I'm just gonna have some ugly knees for probably a week you don't want to see them so um all right, so let's take a look at the notes. Now, first of all, my notes said, remember knowledge design. And we've talked about this many times on this channel. If you're newer here, you want to make sure you go to our micro lessons playlist and watch about task analysis and knowledge design. And knowledge design is how can we build into the system what we know, pretending we work for Disney here or we've been hired by Disney, how do we build in what savvy people know even if the user is less savvy? Now, a couple of other notes I wrote, what does the DVC system know when I'm logged in? So this is a reminder that when you log into this system to use this booking tool, it will know your home resort and booking windows, which again, I'm not gonna explain again, we're already taking up half the time going over what happened before. How many points I have available now and next year? How many one-time points I'm allowed to buy if I'm short, which is up to 24 at $15 each? What might I need to know that I might not know? What resorts are close to certain parks? What might I need to do after booking that I might or might not know about? How do I get park tickets? Do I want water park tickets? Are my park reservations, are park reservations available on my dates? How do I get those? So uh, dining reservations, special shows, golf, tennis, how do I get to my hotel? What airport should I fly into? Now, obviously we're, we're going real scope creepy, as we say, the scope is creeping. We're gonna be building a booking system, but after you're done with your booking, can we create an interface that helps people move to the next steps of their task or guides them on what to do next, uh, especially since they'll have options. But for now, we're going to focus on the booking itself. I imagine we'll also do it next week as well, because there's really a lot to, to pack into this thing right now. And if you want to see what the existing one looks like, watch episode 20. We walked through it in slow motion. I later had to blur some of the screen because it had my membership number. Um, which makes me semi hackable. But the weird thing was then I asked the question of why is my membership number on all of these screens? That doesn't need to be there. There is a special screen. I can go to my profile and see my membership number if I need it, need to see it. But why when I'm booking a room, do I need to see my membership number? I'm logged in. Disney knows who I am. So that was like a piece of extraneous information that evidently if someone else saw it, I might be hackable. So not good. All right, so let's start with, um, now again, remember, because I don't start with sketching, I just start putting stuff on the screen as it comes to my brain. I will make many passes at this. I will move things around, reorder them, take things away. So, you know, don't feel like, well, the first thing Debbie did is her design. It is always, always evolving. So I think the first thing that I want to think about is... Um, well, there's a number of things we could put first. We could ask what dates you're traveling. We could ask um, how many uh, people are you going to put in the room, which would help you uh, figure out um, what size room you need. That was a knowledge thing we talked about in episode 20, which was, do you need a deluxe one bedroom, two bedroom, or three bedroom? And your answer is probably, I don't know, how many people can you fit in there? The site didn't tell you that. So we have to find a way to build that knowledge in. Um, also, how many adults, how many children? Ugh. So tough stuff. 
um, complicated stuff. This is not you want to build a page to sell a cupcake, make a cupcake site. This is this is complicated real world stuff. So um, just to get some stuff out on the screen, and I might reorder it later. Let's put. Um, uh, I oh, I remember in the the current one started by asking you how many adults and how many children, but then it didn't seem to do much with that information. So maybe we can start with. Um, I, I think Disney uses three levels of humans: adults, children, and I think babies, because I think there's no charge for babies to do certain things, but there are, are uh, children pay less for certain things than adults do. That only has to do with the tickets. It doesn't have to do with the hotel room. A hotel room is a hotel room. But let's start throwing some stuff on the screen and um, let's see what we can um, start to put together. And so, ooh, that's, that font is ridiculously big. Let me drag out a smaller font. We can always make it bigger. And note that I'm gonna use a lot of manual font sizes here. I do teach you in my actual course to use global widget styling, which is like a way to make your own CSS classes so you can use the same font typography stuff over and over. I should do that, but I'm gonna go fast and lazy and I'm gonna not do that. So, and I'm also not gonna worry too much about a lot of my typography and spacing. This isn't a, a final design. This is an early sketchy concept. Imagine I am sketching right now. This is my first pass. So how many adults, and we should show what ages that means. I, I don't remember totally at Disney, but I think it, it's uh, I think it's 19 and up, but I, 18 and up, I don't remember. But let's, let's pretend I'm right and we'll figure it later if I'm not. So let's say ages 18 and up. Um, we're also going to need uh, how many children? Um, see, this would be children ages, I think it's 3 to 17. Um, but again, I'm making this up right now. Uh, uh, I don't know. And then uh, I don't know if this is infants or babies or toddlers or how they call this. Well, you know, imagine that we would use whatever is the right nomenclature that Disney uses. They probably have terms that they use consistently around their website. I don't have that document in front of me. I'm guessing at words, but this would be fixed later by a content specialist. I'm putting placeholder text. Uh, Whitney says, do they allow pets or service animals? Have I seen a service animal at Disney? That's a good question, but I'm not sure it would change what room you're in. Because right now this is the hotel booking flow. So we have to keep our eyes on the prize of the task at hand, which is people want to check hotel availability and hopefully book a hotel. So let's say babies are just to have some placeholder text, ages zero to two. And again, I, I might have this wrong, but it's placeholder text uh, for now. And how many people uh, do we uh, are, are there? We can um, create. I didn't. So I didn't create any components ahead of time. That's how unprepared I am. Uh, Whitney says, if they bring animals, do they have specific rooms? Let's find out. Um, service animals DVC. Service animals. <clears throat> Boo. Okay. A service animal is a dog or miniature horse trained to do work, performs, so dogs and horses. Due to the nature of some attractions, service animals may not be permitted to ride. Yeah, please don't put your dog on a roller coaster. Um... Cast members, which is what they call their workers. Service animals are not allowed in water. Okay. Restricted areas, restricted areas, restricted areas. Places your service animal can pee. Service animals, yeah. Okay, so I don't know if they have specific rooms, but I, I do know that we're going to have to find out if they need... Um, uh, uh, if anybody in the group um, might have any uh, mobility condition or other condition, um, yeah, they can go to a room, I think. 
um, that would require them. So, for example, we learned in episode 20 that when I go to the Disney resorts, I usually stay at one called Old Key West. And last I checked, they've got no elevators. That means you do not want to be put on the second or third floor because it's stairs only. So if you have any sort of uh, disability condition, diagnosis, or strong preference um, for that, then, you know, that we have to identify that. So for now, just as a placeholder, let's bring in a uh, checkbox to identify people who are looking for, let's just call them disability friendly rooms. Now, is that the right term? No. Is that an insulting term? I hope not. But remember, this is placeholder text. It's not going to be our finalized text. Um, And again, we might have a uh, text that's going to explain what that means. Some buildings do have elevators. I think Bay Lake Tower has an elevator, but a lot of them, especially the ones that were built a long time ago, do not have elevators. So, um, uh, so hypothetically, someone who uh, might uh, use a wheelchair could stay in Bay Lake Tower, take the elevator, or would want to be on the first floor of Thing. Um, it might also mean that they want to that we should put those people close to um, the main uh, building where there's the restaurants and the front desk and the concierge and all that, so that if they have to uh, walk or or use the wheelchair, it's not very far. So I'm just going to call it disability friendly, knowing that a content designer, content strategist, writer is going to save my butt later with better copy that make sure the user understands this. So right now I'm just thinking in terms of, of interaction and function. Someone else will write better copy later. Um, all right. Oh, and by the way, if you want to follow along, uh, not live, but later on with the Axure file, you can find the Axure file from a browser at VV number three, letter R, letter N like Nancy, number nine dot Axshare, A-X-S-H-A-R-E dot com. I will load it up when we're done. Um, all right. So we're going to capture how many people there are. Notice I didn't put any controls here yet. I'm just starting to put stuff on the screen. We're going to capture how many people there, there are. And if they require a disability friendly room, that means we're not going to accidentally sell them a property that only has third floor rooms left. Um, so uh, that's behind the scenes. Uh, okay, so let's see what else. Now, I also think that when we see how many adults there are and how many children there are, we can make recommendations to people for which type of room that they need. The Disney Vacation Club resorts have four types of rooms, as we've talked about. The uh, I think they call it deluxe, which is like a studio part. It's like a it's like a studio. Um, so we'll call it, I'll just, again, I'm not going to use the right Disney nomenclature. Someone will fix that later. So I'm going to call it studio, one bedroom, two bedroom, three bedroom. I know they use words like villa, one bedroom villa. I'm not going to get wrapped up in that right now. I'm going to focus more on functions, uh, and making sure this is usable, logical, intuitive, easy, doesn't make anybody go, what, what do I do now? What do they want to know? So let's imagine that we have, um, let's see, I think, did I make a segmented controller? No. All right. I suck. Um, all right. So let's just use some secondary buttons right now, just as a placeholder. And I'm going to chuck these in and, um, we're going to put, so let's see, let's also give these some headlines and adjust again as placeholders. So let's say I start with, um, who is traveling? Now, again, these may be terrible headlines. I'm just using them as placeholders for now so I can start to organize this thing into some sort of sections. Um, so who is traveling? And then uh, the next one might have to do with room types. Um, what types of room? And again, that's obviously not the final text. Total placeholder, just putting something in for now so I can start to think about how I want this to work. 
Gabriela says, would it be worthwhile to differentiate a hotel room for smokers and non-smokers? All Disney rooms are non-smoking. Great question, Gabriela. All of the rooms are non-smoking. You have to go to a special outdoor area to smoke. You may not, as far as I know, you may not smoke in your room or on your balcony. Uh, Walt Disney World, let's see, DVC smoking rooms. Uh, designated smoking areas, that's 2007. Designated smoking areas. Desig smoking is not permitted in guest rooms or on balconies, I believe, anywhere on the Disney property. So great question from Gabriella. That would be something we would collect, but in this case, nopers. So do they want a studio? Do they want a one bedroom? And I'm just going to do some quick copy and paste. Two bedroom and three bedroom. Now, I think that we need some hints here. So I'm going to add um, a little bit of uh, knowledge assistance here. And I'm going to, where's my styling? Uh, Gabriella says, I didn't know. I've never visited Disney. Thanks, Debbie. Exactly. We can't know these things unless we have domain knowledge. And we would gain that domain knowledge through Googling for some of it, talking to our client, or if we work in Disney, talking to our coworkers, um, or maybe we learn some things from the, the research. But ultimately, you can't smoke in a room, so I, I'm not going to ask you if you want a smoking room or not. Um, so I'm going to write sleeps four. So notice what I'm doing. I'm doing something that I like to call answering questions before they're asked. How many people can sleep in these rooms? Sleeps four. Um, so uh, let's see, one bedrooms. I don't remember what they sleep. So let's just, you know, we're going to put placeholder text here. I might write the wrong information. You know, don't kill me. Um, this is just a placeholder. So um one bedrooms probably sleep six to eight, but um, I can't remember. I'm going to put six and I'm just going to um, pretend, pretend I know what I'm doing here. I always get the studio, so I don't know what anything else sleeps. I don't know. So pre let's pretend I do know or that someone who does know is going to fix this later. And these are placeholders. Sleeps 10. And let's imagine three bedrooms sleeps 14. I, I could be totally wrong, but that's not important right now. What is important is I'm trying to build some knowledge into that so that people go, hmm, yeah, what type of room do I need? Well, let's see, we've got me and the spouse and, and two kids and grandma and grandpa. Okay, we're not going to fit in a studio. Boom. We've just saved somebody from making a mistake. If they don't have, remember, we have to build knowledge in that we have and that savvy people have because we might have not savvy people using this system. So that's an idea that I have. Could I change that idea later? Yeah, I might come back later and go, I don't like this. Or maybe I think sleep six should be inside the button and the button should be bigger. This is just my early ideas of solving problems and helping people as they go. Now, uh, what else do we need to know? Um, typically, uh, we have to ask them if they want to search all of the hotels at the Disney property. And we're going to pretend for our sake that we're only going to offer people the hotels at the Walt Disney World property, even though Disney does have other hotels off the property. Just for practice, we're just going to focus on the hotels on the property. What are those hotels? I made a list of them on the project details plan over here. So here they are. I think there's 11, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 11. And they're each near certain things. So I've made a note of what they're near and how you can get to your closest park. And then I grabbed a couple of icons that could represent different forms of transportation. Why? Because people don't really understand. Once I get to a Disney hotel, 
how do I get anywhere from there? That takes experience, savviness. You don't know in, until you've done it or unless you've read up a lot about it. So hypothetically, these are, uh, we want to give some people choices and I want to make sure that people understand which hotels are near which things. Um, because someone might say, oh, wow, you know, my kids really love Animal Kingdom. We want to be closest to that park. Um, people might have those types of preferences. So what I'm going to do, I can't really, I'm not going to copy and paste this. I'm going to copy and paste. Um, oh, actually, well, let's see. Uh, I don't know. I probably know some of these by heart. Let's see how far I can get uh, from memory. But again, I only have this from memory because I am the user. So I just have to watch myself. Um, okay, so our next question might be, um, which resorts are you considering? That's a terrible question. Remember, I'm writing terrible stuff right now. I am not the content strategist placeholder text. I don't want to hear later, Debbie, we hate your headlines. They're terrible. I'm with you. Someone will fix them later. All right. So I am going to make it really clear and use some, hopefully some nice visual hierarchy, uh, where people, uh, might want to consider staying. So let's bump up this font a little bit. And again, I would normally make font classes inside of Axure, but I didn't. And I'm sorry. So, uh, near, near the magic kingdom. Okay. So what you, again, knowledge, um, Disney has four main parks, uh, Disney in Florida. This is all Disney in Florida, by the way, this is not Disneyland, California or Disney Paris. This is Di only Disney, Florida. There are four parks, magic kingdom, Epcot, animal kingdom, and Hollywood Studios. And uh, there are resorts near them. Ooh, what's near this from memory? Hoo, hoo, hoo. And alphabetically. Hoo, hoo, hoo. Uh, okay, so let's drop some stuff here. I'm going to have to fix this later. Alphabetically from memory, Bay Lake Tower, BLT for short. Uh, ooh, uh, uh, Grand Floridian. Help me out, Disney fans. Any Anybody here? Uh, let's space these out a little bit more. Maybe give this more of a modern look. Uh, Grand Floridian Villas. I, I know these aren't the right names. Um, I, I think it's like the Villas at the Grand Floridian. I'm just going with uh, what I know right now. Um, just stick with me. Uh, okay, there's the Polynesian bungalows and villas or something like that. I think it's P, PVB. Let's look back at my uh, cheat sheet. Ah, Boulder Ridge and Copper Creek. Oh, yes, I missed it. Boulder Ridge and Copper Creek. Okay, let's get those in there. Now, why am I doing this right now? Because resorts in the Disney Disneyverse are really important. Uh, let's get Copper Creek and Boulder Ridge in there. Lani says, Coronado Springs. Lani, you are correct, but the Disney Vacation Club Villas at Coronado Springs uh, are not at Coronado Springs. There are no, ooh, trick question. There are no Disney Vacation Club villas at Coronado Springs. These are only Disney Vacation Club villas we're focused on today, not all of Disney World. You might have joined late. Um, so we will include uh, the Riviera, um, but we are uh, not including uh, Coronado Springs because it is not a Disney Vacation Club property. So we have, oh, I am messing up my alphabet. Look at me. This one alphabetically should say Boulder Ridge, and I'm just going to abbreviate knowing someone will come in and rescue me from myself later. Copper Creek Cabins. What is it called again? Somebody? Cab <laughs> Copper Creek CCR. I, I don't know. Copper Creek. I'm bad. I, I didn't study before this. I, had, I fell in a hole. Copper Creek Villas and Cabins CCV. Okay, got it. So, um, 
Now, I'm going to skip ahead a little bit because there's 11 of these and I'm going a little bit slow um, and I want to get more done. So I'm going to not show all 11 just for the purposes of my first pass because this is my first pass. I'm sketching. I'm going to jump to Disney area, Disney Springs area resorts because I'm going to use Old Key West because Old Key West happens to be my home resort. So I'm going to um, include that. And I'm going to do that by doing this. A little copy paste action. And let's write near Disney Springs. And again, wh what is Disney Springs? Do people know? Should we say more than that? I would work with the content people on that. Do we need to say Disney Springs shopping and dining? complex or, or whatever it is so i'm just gonna placeholder this right now so this would be uh old key west which we call okr funny enough um not to be mi confused with objectives and key results and saratoga springs the most hated <laughs> most disliked of all of the disney vacation club resorts saratoga springs i think it's called resort technically SSR. Now, why, now, so why did I jump ahead? We want to make sure we communicate to people um, which one is their home resort. Remember, we had that on our list. How are we going to make sure people noticed their home resort? When you might say, oh, come on, Deb, they bought a vacation package. They should know what their home resort is. I can't guarantee that they remember what their home resort is. Maybe they have a couple of packages and they have two home resorts. So again, don't rely on people's memory. Use knowledge design. Let Answer their questions before they have questions. That's the key. So I need a way to make it super clear that this is your home resort. So how am I going to do that? Well, just as a placeholder... Let me jump back into here. Let's grab uh, an icon from Font Awesome. Let's see if I can do a, a house or a home. Uh, here we go. Placeholder, house. Let's see if I can paste that in or if I'm having a bad Font Awesome day. Ugh. That does not look like a house. Heads up. So, um, for now, I'm just going to write uh, icon. I'm going to write home resort icon. This is just a note to myself that uh, once I get past these early passes, that should have a nice icon there. And um, not the words home resort icon. But we want a way to make sure people know this is your home resort. Now, we learned in episode 20 when we did a lot of domain knowledge that you can book your home resort um, uh, uh, in a larger window than your non-home resort. So I can book my home resort 11 months in advance, which gives me a little bit of an, of an advantage. And I can book the other ones seven months in advance. So um, it uh, might be good to communicate to people which one is their home resort. Um, I think um, another thing we might want to consider is how would I select more than one of these? Is there an easy way where I could um, select more than one of these? What about a select all checkbox? And again, placeholder text. And we might also decide maybe we want a checkbox next to Magic Kingdom. Maybe it's a select all for all of the Magic Kingdom resorts. Maybe I want a checkbox there. Um, I might decide later. Otherwise, people have to go, oh, yeah, I want to be near the Magic Kingdom. Check, 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 check. Kind of sucks, right? Not fun. So let's do it. Why not? I am in sketching mode. I know it doesn't look like sketching, but, but this for me is sketching. Let's bump up that font and use that visual hierarchy. So let's give it that. Let's give it a bold. And we could say uh, all resorts near the magic kingdom 
Groovy, that doesn't line up. Visual designers are crying. Why doesn't that line up? This one's at x equals 46. Okay, that should line up now. Let's move it up a little bit. Okay, there we go. And let's do the same with our Disney Springs. So again, these are just early ideas. Are any of them good? Maybe. Are any of them bad? Not sure yet. I am just starting out with an early pass. Okay, so, so far we've asked people who's traveling and we would have some controls here for them to select uh, n quantities, numbers. What, what types of room? And I put types because I'm going to let them select more than one of these. Maybe people are going, ah, you know, I don't know. Uh, studio, one bedroom, I think I could do either. Whatever. You know, maybe a family of four wants a one bedroom. The parents want to sleep in the bedroom with the door closed. The kids are out on the sofa bed. That's up to them. I'm not going to tell them they can't. Um, okay, which resorts are you considering? Great. At some point, we got to ask people when they're traveling. And again, I could always reorder these later. And feel free to yell stuff out, everybody. I am monitoring the chat rooms, and I am happy to see your questions and ideas. This is a team effort, uh, or so we're imagining. So, um, when are you traveling? Did I spell that correctly for Eng American English? I don't even know. Is that British English or American? Someone will fix it. It's placeholder. Now, I had an idea about this. I had an idea because I was thinking about families who tend to travel the same week every year or every other year. They might say, you know what? We always go at Easter. We always go around Easter. Now, here's a question. When is next Easter? I don't know. That's knowledge design. Does the person, the person goes, I know I want to go around Christmas. I don't know what days Christmas or Easter might be. So one thing that we could do to help people out is we could either give them a list of common holidays that children tend to have off from school. Maybe, ooh, I'm, I'm coming up with ideas as I'm saying this out loud. Children being off from school. Okay, so... Um, what if we, they only see that if they say they have children, because maybe the people who are coming without children don't care as much about when the kids are off school. Maybe they do care about when the kids are off school because then they have to figure out who's going to hang out with the kids uh, to be determined. Just ideas right now. Uh, John says, don't forget special requests. We always appreciate a crib being available when we arrive. Okay, great. So just uh, off to the side to uh, remind um, uh, ourselves, uh, let's put special requests and let's make a bunch of check boxes. Um, let's see, let's grab four because I can think of a few things that, and then we'll move this to the bottom later, but I don't even know where the bottom of the page is right now because I am still sort of sketching. Um, so we might want a cot. If we have a fifth person, we might want a crib. Uh, we might want a room near the, um, Main building. There's a better word for main building, and I, I can't remember what it is. Um, uh, f uh, oop, let's put this. If it's alphabetical, let's put this last, even though it's placeholder text. First floor room. Let's just imagine. Now, again, Disney would know what are some of the most common special requests they get. We would take these and we would put them here. And that way people don't have to type them into a box. They don't have to call up later and say, I booked a room, but can you please make sure it's on the first floor? And when I talk about a room near a main building, let's just um, f fill in a little domain knowledge for people. Uh, old, old Key West map. So, if we take a look at Old Key West, um, this is what it looks like. As you can see, there are multiple buildings. It's almost like a little community. And if you want to be near where like the restaurant and the front desk and the concierge and the gift shop are, 
you have to specially request that. You might not get a room near it. Now, I always request it, and I always get it, because um, I go on really slow times for Disney, but, you know, it's, but people are not necessarily going to have that knowledge. So we might have to even, exp you know, there might need to be a uh, room near the main building, you know, and again, maybe we have to explain this, restaurant, gift shop, uh, concierge, sorry, my box is centering and it looks terrible, concierge, whatever, someone's going to clean up my text later, right? Uh, cause, cause I'm not, I'm, I'm writing placeholder text. Uh, Whitney says, should we add another box so it's not limited to just those options in case there's anything we're not knowledgeable about? Sure, we can always give them a text box and say um, other and uh, let them type it in. So let's imagine we give them a text box. It needs a label. So let's just grab some label text and... Just put over here, maybe with a little bit larger, uh, let's see, other special requests, but there's probably some sort of language that says, we can't guarantee that you're going to get these, but you can request them. And there might need to be language that says, um, if these are make or break important, you're going to have to call. So I, I think there's probably going to need to be additional language here, but we'll leave this as a placeholder for now. Um, John says, this is how a lot of hotels handle it. They give examples in the placeholder text. Yeah, so I don't even know what should go here. Um, I really don't. So that would require some knowledge from Disney and what common requests are and also how they handle people who make a request that they then for some reason can't fulfill. But I think if somebody wants a first floor room or room near the main building, I almost feel like we need to know that first. Who feels like we need to know that first? That way we don't tell people, oh yeah, you can get Old Key West. You're on the third floor. I've been on the third floor. And going up those two flights of stairs after you've walked 13 miles around Disney parks at the end of the day, ooh, it burns. Um, so... The cot in the crib is not make or break. Disney's going to give you that. No problem, no questions asked, and usually no extra charge as far as I know. But the, the first floor room or the room near the main building, that is, um, that's, a, that's a tougher nut to crack. So why don't, we, why don't we throw that in a little bit early um, just to see how it feels. We might decide later that it's in the way or it's weird, but... Um, Let's, let's give it a try. Um, let's say first floor room or room near elevator. Because again, some, some resorts have first floor rooms, no elevators. Other people might just want to be close to an elevator. Um, let's imagine that. So where in the flow should that go? Where, where should we ask them that? Um, I think that we could maybe group it with the disability friendly room thing move everything else down and ask it nice and early. Let's try that. But again, I'm in sketching mode, so I might change my mind later. Hard to say, but uh, let's give it a try and see how we feel about it. Okay. Let's move this. Let's put this over here. We're going to need disability friendly room here. Now, what does that mean? We're probably going to have to explain that to people, but for now, let's just assume someone we work with has some sort of text that we can grab or a better way to explain it. Let's move some stuff down and get this into position. So, of course, we will definitely be continuing this next week. There's no way we're going to get this done today, but we'll certainly make a nice start. Uh, let's drop this in. 
Any other thoughts, questions? Remember, for those of you joining live, and thank you so much for joining live, do you have any questions as I'm going? What are you wondering about the process, the design, the, the decisions, any of that? You know, this is an educational opportunity for you to learn what's in my head as I am starting to do some preliminary design. Uh, this box is probably a little bit too big. Because I hope that we've used check boxes for the ones that are most common. Okay, let's put that there. Save, save, save. Okay, when are you traveling? Okay, so this has a lot more complexity that we probably won't solve today. We'll have to continue into next week. Um, and we do have this next week. Let me just check my schedule. Make sure I didn't cancel it for next week. Now, we have this next week. And then I'm uh, taking a couple of weeks off. So this will pause, but we'll see how far we get next week. And either we'll wrap it up or we'll pick it up when I get back. Um, not only do we need to know when people are traveling because of when school holidays might be, but if you remember episode 20, we talked about how different times of year cost different numbers, <clears throat> excuse me, of your timeshare points. Janice says, I know you don't look at the current site before you start tackling design, but is there ever a point where you ever look to compare? I might look at some point to say, D is there something that's here now that I, I just forgot? You know, like what if I forgot disability friendly room? Then I'd go, oh yeah, look, the current flow asks if they have a disability friendly room. I forgot to ask that. So I might look at the current flow at some point, but mostly to check myself for anything that I missed. Sometimes before I start, I'll make a list like this based on what's happening in the current flow. Like, don't forget to ask them their dates. Don't forget to ask if they need a disability room. Don't forget to ask blah, blah, blah. And then I don't look back at it. Um, Gabriella says selection about room accessibility friendly would offer things other than the room on the first floor or near the elevator. Yeah, I don't know. And, and I would have to look this up if Disney has special accessibility rooms that maybe have a wider door. Um, I don't know if all rooms accommodate wheelchairs and mobility devices and scooters. Um, so that would be something that I happen to just not know offhand, whether all rooms are wheelchair, scooter, mobility device friendly, or whether only certain rooms have been configured, you know, for example, like I can think of the rooms I stay at Old Key West, they are not wheelchair friendly. They are not mobility device friendly because they have, who can guess what I'm going to say? A bathtub. Now, if you have to roll your wheelchair into a shower area, as some people do, um, you can't do that if you have to step into a bathtub to take a shower. Um, so, cause, and I know this because I've gotten a wheelchair-friendly room on a cruise ship, and the bathroom was one big flat surface. And so you could roll up to the toilet, you could roll up to the sink, you could roll up right into the shower and shower in your wheelchair if you chose to. Um, so, um, Jennifer says, would you still design with a clean slate like this? If you knew you had to ultimately make changes to the existing experience rather than a complete redesign. Yeah. Great question. If the scope of the project is, uh, we only want slight changes, you know, that's very foolish for a company to design, decide that up front. I typically do try to go blue sky with it because ultimately so far, most of the things I've done are text changes. I haven't really changed much functionality on the page yet. I'm planning to, the calendar is going to bring in new functionality. So I would say, don't assume, even if a product manager says to you, ah, you know, this is a small project, just think about some small changes. I would still say, challenge yourself to design something that's really great. Because what if you did that? What if you took yourself out of the box that they put you in and you said, look, I know you were only thinking about some small changes, but once I started working from our research and what we know about our target audiences, I realized it would be so much better if we made some other changes as well. And here's an idea that I'd, I'd like to bring to usability 
quality testing. So I would say get out of the box, even when they say, hey, we, we're just going to make small changes here. I would say go for something bigger. You can always document it and say, hey, this was a design that I had. I was told we don't have time for that. So this is my second idea. I've done things like that. So great one, Jennifer. Uh, John says, at the very least, it may give them higher priority um, for the room near the elevator or the first floor. Yeah, unknown. Again, I don't work at Disney, never have, so I don't know these things, but we're pretending that we either work at Disney or my agency has been hired by Disney and we have direct access to people who absolutely know these answers and we would not be guessing. Um, alrighty, so we only have a few more minutes left, so I do hope people will join. And I also want to remind everybody of the super cool new news that we have opened a Discord server. So uh, if you love Slack, join our Slack uh, for free. If you love Discord, we now have Discord for free. And I'm active in both, helping everybody out, supportive communities in both places. Join one, join both, totally up to you. Join neither, but we'd love to see you somewhere. Um, so you can find the links at deltacx.com slash links or in the YouTube description, thanks to Udipta. Um, Jennifer says, in your UX process diagram, you show research, content, IA, interaction design, etc. Would you ideally have some of this content available to you during the design phase or just work with placeholder copy? Normally, at the jobs that I've worked on, it's been both. Typically, I have access to some of the standard copy they use, like this is the way we want to call our resorts. This is the way we describe you know, always write one bedroom villa or always write one dash bedroom villa. You know, they're, they're going to have some document that probably has a lot of standard language. You know, don't call it a cot, call it a roll away bed. So chances are there's usually a document with some standard language that I will have access to and I will work from. And then anything else I don't have, I put placeholder text. And one of the tricks that I do with some of the things where I know it's placeholder, placeholder text, and I know it's probably not great, is I will write lorem ipsum in front of it. So for example, lorem ipsum who is traveling. Now you know for sure that that is placeholder text. You see lorem ipsum, but you see the intention of it. If you just write lorem ipsum, I don't know what you're going for there. So one of my secrets to placeholder content is write lorem ipsum and then write the intention of what would go in that space. So Laura Mipsum special requests, Laura Mipsum what types of rooms, Laura Mipsum other special requests, anything that I know is not finalized copy or something I'm guessing at right now, I usually write Laura Mipsum at the front of it so, or just Laura if I don't feel like I have room so people know this is not final, I need somebody to get me some better copy here. Um, I also feel like I want a little bit of space between this select all and the first choice. Okay. Um, but again, I'm not a visual designer and I'm not always good at like pixel perfection. And this is me in sketching mode. So when are you traveling? I don't think we're going to have time. So I'm going to load this up to the server so that if you would like to check it out, you can catch up with where we are in this project. We will continue it next week and I hope you'll be back to ask all of your great questions and for us to continue designing it. I hope that we'll be able to build it out well enough that we'll be able to um, use the actual prototype, try it out. And that's often how I start doing passes at my design because I start filling it out. I imagine, you know, I'm a family of four with a kid in a wheelchair and uh, or a kid who uses a wheelchair and now I'm going to try to book this for Easter week and then you know I just put myself in a user situation because I'm not the user I think about somebody else and then I see was this fast was this easy you know where could someone get stuck so I just kind of take some passes at my own thing and for that I need to bring this prototype to life a little bit more which means more actioning right now it's a glorified wireframe um, all right so let's jump back to a giant picture of me hi 
Um, and uh, with that, I will just mention uh, thanks to everybody for joining us for this Think Out Loud hour. There will definitely be an episode 23 where we will continue this design. I might see if I have time during the week or over the weekend to fill in some of the things and, and start to add some of the actual interactivity if I can make time. And that way, when we start next Monday, we're just a little bit uh, further ahead into it. I'm probably not going to bother making a realistic calendar. It would just take me so long to build that in Aksher, it's not worth it. We'll just use some placeholder months and we'll pretend that they do things. Manuel says it keeps getting better. Thanks for this, Debbie. Sure. Any other last questions about the, the designs, Disney Vacation Club, the show, um, what we're doing, what we're doing next? If you have any last questions, let's ask them now. Um, otherwise, I'll be playing us out of here. And while I wait for your questions, let me check my calendar and tell you what's coming next. Tomorrow is a very special edition of Office Hours Ask Me Anything, which is always at 6.30 p.m. Italy time. Our special guest will be my boyfriend, Pier Mario, because we're celebrating passing 5,000 subscribers. Thanks to all of you. Subscribe. And he is going to be here taking your questions with me. So if you have serious questions or Debbie's boyfriend questions, um, make sure you are getting those ready for tomorrow. Charlene says, yay. I know he's a fan favorite. Uh, we should have the Pierre Mario fan club, uh, maybe in the Discord channel. Um, Wednesday the 27th, we are so excited that we are going to have Hung back on the show. Already, the totally lovable Hung Shu is going to be back talking about what the interface on LinkedIn looks like from a recruiter's perspective and how we might want to adjust some stuff that we're doing on LinkedIn for how it looks to recruiters. Super helpful. Thursday, no show. I think it might be Darren's chit chat and I don't like to schedule on top of that. And then of course, Friday's critical thinking stream with my apologies to someone who sent something in last week and I forgot to do it. So we'll do uh, that. Thank you, Gabriella. So um, as always, won't you please subscribe here? Won't you please tell some of your friends, coworkers, your manager uh, about this channel? We are here to help you with your current and future UX or CX job. And, uh, and it is freaking free. And there's no affiliate links. There's no sponsors. You are not for sale. Um, so with that, I hope to see many of you joining the Discord and the Slack. And uh, thank you, Whitney. Always good to see you here. And I will see everybody tomorrow for our super fun version of Office Hours. I'm going to press the button and I'll see you all tomorrow. Bye. Customer centricity as business intelligence. Visit DeltaCX.com to learn why we are...